What is up folks and welcome back to another real user review video with Zip Hearing. And today we got something super cool from Resound. If this is the first time you're checking out these videos, welcome, hello, welcome to the community, welcome to the club. I'm Nick. If you've been here before, what's up? Welcome back. It's been a while, right? In today's video, we are going to be looking at the Resound Nexia 9 Micro RIE. As usual, we're just going to get a few things out of the way, take care of some general housekeeping. So, number one, I am and will continue to be a Zip Hearing customer. I had purchased my Phonak Lumity 90s through Zip Hearing and saved thousands of dollars compared to what my audiologist was trying to get me to buy them for. Uh, so I am eternally grateful for their discounted price and eternally grateful for their excellent service. Number two, while we are going to be talking about the Resound Nexia 9s, these were not sent to me by Resound. Uh, these were actually sent to me by Zip Hearing. Neither company has any sort of input into what I will be talking about with these hearing aids. Neither of them will be seeing the content of this video prior to it being uploaded. Uh, so you can feel safe in knowing that this is a real user review. These are my true thoughts, my true opinions, and my true evaluation of the Resound Nexia 9. Just a little bit of background uh, on my hearing loss. I do have a mild sensory neural hearing loss diagnosed by my audiologist. Um, I was kind of borderline between whether I needed hearing aids or not. However, for me, my biggest challenge is hearing things that I want to hear in loud, noisy environments. Uh, and doing the type of work I do outside of these reviews, um, hearing people speak in loud environments is a necessity in order to kind of overcome that challenge. Uh, I did decide to jump into the world of hearing aids um, and that's where Zip Hearing stepped in. I was looking for a very specific model um, at a price that I could afford and they kind of checked all those boxes along with the customer service and the professionalism that was sent my way after reaching out. Uh, so if you want to check out what's available with Zip Hearing, uh, please, by all means, go ahead, click this thing. Should be right around here. Also, in today's video, we're gonna do something a little different. Uh, I was able to take this little bad boy, this little action camera, and we went on a trip to New York City to go uh, get fitted for these hearing aids. We talked to the audiologist, we had some questions answered, we kind of give you a, a glimpse into what a basic initial fitting might be like. Um, so we are gonna include that footage in here. So uh, I think this is this can be pretty exciting. Not only did Zip Hearing send the hearing aids, which are in my ears, but also they came in this box. They also sent the TV Streamer Plus. They also sent the premium charger. Yes, we are gonna talk about these two accessories and we are gonna talk about the hearing aids. Before we jump into the actual user experience, let's talk about some tech specs. While most of these specs that I'm gonna mention are not particularly unique, to Resound, Resound does them in a way that really gets them above everybody else. We have environmental recognition, directionality, noise reduction, impulse noise reduction, feedback management, a low frequency boost, speech intelligibility in noise, direct audio streaming, public connectivity, and a slew of accessories. There is a Resound Smart 3D phone app, and there's also a pretty unique little app for your watch too. Let's talk about the connectivity. These hearing aids do use an MFI or made for iPhone connectivity standard with Bluetooth. If you have any kind of iPhone, pretty seamless, flawless in fact. Not only is it limited to iPhones, right? This can also connect with your iPads, your MacBook computers, your Mac desktop computers, uh, pretty much any Apple device. This MFI standard is gonna be a-okay. If you are an Android user with the Resound Nexia and you're looking to connect with Bluetooth LE audio streaming and AuraCast, uh, the list of compatible devices is gonna be a little bit smaller. At the moment, LE audio streaming and AuraCast are only gonna be supported on your Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus, and the Samsung Galaxy S23. 
Furthermore, if you are a Android user and you are looking to connect these hearing aids to your Android and it is not one of the Samsung Galaxy S23 phones, uh, you are going to have to connect using classic Bluetooth to audio streaming and you will not be able to make two-way hands-free calls. For the purposes of this video, I do want to let you know the equipment that I'm using. I'm using an iPhone 15 Pro and I'm using an Apple Watch Ultra Generation 1. So what I would like to do now is uh, instead of kind of talking you through the process, I'm going to show you. So here is some footage from my brief journey into New York City. Uh, I hope you enjoy. All right. Well, it is raining and we are going on a trip. We're going to head into the city, New York City, and we are going to get fitted for the new Resound hearing aids. Uh, so now I'm in the city, about to head over uh, to get fitted for the new Resound Nexia 9s. I'm pretty excited. Um, I, all the tech inside of them is gonna be great. I can't wait to get it hooked up to the phone, see what the streaming is like, see what the battery life is like, see what the comfort is like, and um, yeah. So I think a really good test after I get these hearing aids fitted is seeing what I can and cannot hear out on these loud New York streets. So I think that should be a really good first impression on what these new Nexia 9s from Resound can do in the hustle and bustle of New York City. Pretty soon you'll see me in the office and uh, we'll, we'll get some footage of the, the tech involved with getting them fit and the programming and uh, yeah, so we'll see you guys in a bit. All right, we are here. We're gonna walk in, see what's going on, and uh, get back to you in a second. So it's recommending open domes for you, but you don't like them, right? Do you prefer the others? Um, or do you want to try the opens first? So normally, like, like, is there an in-between between an open and a close? Like, is there like a semi-vented or? They have um, like a tulip. Okay. It's closed, but it has like the flaps. Yeah. <clears throat> I've never used that style. Um, is the open like fairly like, like, a, like a phone act or like a, yeah, yeah okay. Oh, that's actually a little better than I thought. So maybe, yeah, maybe we can just try the, the, the open. open. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. But now is a calibration. So you're going to hear some buzzing. Resounds is pretty loud. And there they go. They're on? They are on. So this is obviously just the first fit taking your um, audiogram and using Resound's algorithm and just coming up with an initial mm -hmm. prescription. Um, how does my voice sound? My voice clear, comfortable? It's clear. I can definitely hear <clears throat> more so when I talk the microphone picking up my voice Your and voice. kind of getting that double, mm -hmm. the doubling. Something that I do is I, I say, like, I, I go through all the plosives and all the S sounds. So, like, purple, box, fox, sly silicone so like the s's are a little harsh a little sibilant. yeah um the plosives are fine they're not like too overwhelming is there anything we can do to just like slightly edit or not edit uh, adjust um that microphone doubling of the voice thing let's try did that change anything uh sly yes yeah. I just so put them down one notch too, um, like soft inputs. Yeah. So it's not. Yeah. I definitely. I don't. I he, I still hear a little bit of the doubling of the voice, but not as much. What was that word? S sil like a syllabant. Like syllabants. Like, yeah. yeah. The syllabants is not as bad. Okay. Good. So now, in terms of um, like programs, mm -hmm. do you have to do the programs on your end through this? Yeah. Okay. So it comes with your standard all around. It's called, and then there's a hearing noise, which is there much more aggressive mm -hmm. noise reduction, noise management. So we have the hearing aids programmed according to my audiogram, my yep. prescription. So we did a calibration with my ear canal and the acoustics. We made a slight adjustment. Actually, can we go back to that adjustment and just 
bring it a little bit more down. Sure. Okay. All right, checking. Che oh, yes, that's way better. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So we did two small adjustments that uh, that fixed the sensation of hearing my voice slightly after hearing my voice, which gives like a doubling effect. Um, and then that also fixed the the uh, S sounds sounding very sharp and harsh. So yeah, so I think we are we're pretty much set, right? For first fit. Okay. As long as it sounds okay. So I was just fit for the Resound Nexia Nines. They feel great. They look great. Can't even really see them. Now I'm just walking around the city, trying to see what the volume situation is like. Um, so far, so good. And I can definitely hear the trucks, the buses, and the cars, the motorcycles. Uh, no people yet. So hopefully we, we can walk a little bit and maybe catch some conversations and see if I can hear what people are saying. Not like to be sneaky or snoop. There's a gentleman here on the phone. Yeah, wow, okay. So normally in other situations, you know, all this extra outside noise would, would pose a problem to my ability to hear what people are saying. That's like my biggest issue with my hearing loss. But I can tell you just from walking by, like I heard what that guy was saying on, the, on, a, on his phone conversation. And there's a woman here also on the phone and I can hear what she's saying. We're gonna jaywalk, don't, don't tell anybody. Yeah, so initial, right off the bat, I am very pleased with how these things are handling outside noise versus hearing the things I want to hear when I want to hear them. Now, in terms of visibility, right, you can't even really see them. They are very small, they are very comfortable, very lightweight. There's no hot spots on them, so I don't feel them behind my ears. My glasses aren't causing an issue with the devices behind my ears. Usually my hat with the glasses will oftentimes cause a hot spot, but that is not happening, uh, which is very pleasing. So thumbs up. That's a really, really good, good design on Resound's part. So I just went into a store here in the city um, to kind of test out the, uh, what they call hear and noise function, where it kind of, you know, reduces the, environmental noise and allows you to focus on whatever's going on in front of you. Uh, so went into a store with the music pumping, super loud. Went in, turned on here in noise mode, started talking to the employee and really did not find that I had any sort of trouble hearing what the employee was saying. I understood the words that were coming out of her mouth. It was a good conversation with a good person and uh, overall, very good experience with the hear and noise function. So thumbs up to that. Works just as good, if not better, than Resound was talking about. So as you saw, after getting fit for these hearing aids, immediately I went down the elevator, went out the front door, and was greeted with the noise and chaos that is New York City. And these hearing aids truly delivered. I was genuinely impressed right off the bat. And that first impression was not just a honeymoon phase. Uh, it did continue throughout the entirety of my testing with these hearing aids. The hear in noise function is mind blowing. I, I don't say this lightly. Uh, I've tried a, a handful of hearing aids at this point. Um, most of them are pretty good with like a front focusing sort of hear in noise functionality or noise isolation kind of blocks out what's going on on the sides and the back and only focuses on the front. Generally, when I heard about this here in noise feature, I was just kind of like, oh, more of the same. But man, was I wrong. This here in noise feature is the best noise isolation sort of front focus I can hear what's coming at me feature I have ever used. It truly and quite naturally eliminates the noise or unwanted sounds around you and allows you to really hear what's going on in front of you because that's really the thing you wanna hear. You don't wanna hear, you know, Billy and Jenny talking about the baby over here. You wanna hear what's going on in front of you. And that hear and noise feature can easily be accessed using the app. Let's talk about this app. It's straightforward, it's simple, it's clean, 
it is attractive, right? These are all things you want in a life partner, uh, but now you also have them in this app for your hearing aids. Very smooth, very easy to use, intuitive, not too crazy. Like there's not a lot of stuff going on in the app. It's really just what you need and allows you to make changes and change between different profiles uh, with great ease. Not only that, but it also comes with a app for your watch. So you can actually change profiles and change volume from your watch, which I think is genius, right? I don't always want to have to take my phone out to like switch to the hear and noise function or switch to the restaurant mode or switch to the music mode. This is already on my wrist. It's already, you know, within clicking reach. I might as well just be able to open the app here and swipe and it's done. This is genius. It is a quality of life feature that I didn't think was super significant at first, but truly is a significant quality of life improvement that we need to see on so many more apps. So let's talk about the hearing aids themselves, right? I'm gonna take them out in a second, um, but figured before then, I'm, I'm gonna keep using them. All right, it is time for the reveal. Here we go, you ready? Look at how tiny these are, oh my gosh. They're super small and they're super comfortable. Here's a, a, a pretty significant selling point for these Nexia 9s. Resound claims they are 25% smaller than the standard RIE hearing aid. While that might not sound like a significant difference because these are hearing aids are pretty small to begin with, uh, I can assure you, major difference. When I first put them on my ears, in my ears, behind my ear, whatever, when I first use these hearing aids, at first I thought, hey, like what, how could this size difference even be something significant? Uh, and then I used them and I was wrong. Uh, pretty big, significant difference. These hearing aids will cater to hearing losses all the way from mild to profound. Most of us are gonna be somewhere in that range, uh, and these hearing aids will be great for anyone within that mild to profound hearing loss range. There's also an accelerometer in these hearing aids which allows for the double tap function to be a thing. Answer your phone calls, end your phone calls, just double tap the hearing aid and it does it. On top of the double tap feature, there is also one singular button on each receiver, which can be programmed to do an assortment of things. Now, let's talk about AuraCast. At the moment, it might not be something you're super familiar with or even something you've heard of before. Uh, however, in the next few years, AuraCast is going to be something that is profound. AuraCast is an accessibility feature that can be used in a public setting like a, a movie theater, a place of worship, airports, arenas, bars, and it's essentially an accessibility feature that will allow whatever sort of audio is being played in that venue to be streamed publicly into your hearing aids. Imagine it like a more broadband version of Bluetooth, right? So instead of it just being from your phone to your hearing aids and that's the single connection, AuraCast is kind of like a, a wide net. It's going to produce a signal wirelessly that you will be able to tap into and use. Sort of like a new school version of Telecoil, AuraCast is supposed to be a much more high fidelity a high quality Bluetooth streaming option for public settings. I've had a, a fantastic experience with these hearing aids over the past two, three weeks. I cannot sing their praises more than I currently am, but really, I mean, hands down, these hearing aids are fantastic. So let's go over what you get in the box. You have your hearing aids, you have a little pouch for storing them on the go. You've also got a little accessory pouch right, with a brush and microfiber to keep them nice and clean. In the bottom portion, right, we have some stuff. We've got the standard charger as well as the charging cable to go along with it. This does take a USB-C charger, and which is not, the cable's not built in, which, oh, thumbs up, love it. And when you open it up, you have a pretty spacious compartment for the hearing aids to charge. Oh, and there's a lid. I was also sent the premium charger. What's cool about this thing is it has a built-in battery. So when you charge it, it holds a charge and then you can take it on the go and put your hearing aids in it if you need to. When we open this one up, very similarly, 
nice big compartment if you have any molds or if you have anything larger for inside the ear this is going to hold it perfectly the only downside is this case is a little larger compared to other companies uh, this is an iphone 15 pro um, and you can see it's it's pretty substantial let's talk about battery life Every now and then you get a company that kind of exaggerates how long a battery may last in their device. Resound is not one of those companies that is exaggerating about the battery life. In fact, um, I'm going to go ahead and say they might be safely underestimating the battery life. One of the first days that I had these hearing aids for testing, um, I popped them in my ears at 7 in the morning use them all day with streaming from my phone with making phone calls from my phone looking at instagram videos facebook videos i was doing it all right i, I wouldn't say i was streaming non-stop but i was streaming collectively probably about four or five hours throughout the day so yeah so i had them in my ears at from seven in the morning with streaming music videos audio phone calls you name it i was doing it took them out of my ears at about 11 p.m to midnight that same day that's like 17 hours um and was shocked when i took them out and looked at the battery percentage on my phone and saw that there was about 70% battery life remaining on those hearing aids. That's right, after about 16 to 17 hours of use, 30%. It used 30% battery in 17 hours. Mind blown. The battery life on these is, is impeccable, right? It's astounding. I don't even know how you could deplete the entire battery life in one day. Like, I, I don't understand how someone could possibly do that, but you can try. Let's talk about this TV streamer. This is a really cool device that you can put on your TV and have the sound from the TV beamed into your hearing aids. I mean, just, just look at this thing. It's tiny. You connect this through the app to your hearing aids, and then you can adjust the volume on here or on the app. It's very easy to connect, very easy to use, very easy to install, and is just tiny. I did set this up immediately upon getting home Plugged it into my TV, no problem. Let's talk about the quality of audio uh, in terms of music being pumped into the hearing aids, kind of like headphones. Do not expect these to sound like AirPods or AirPods Pro or anything specifically designed to listen to music. These are great if you're listening to a podcast. Uh, it gets the job done, but it's not great. How it relates to the experience with other hearing aids, uh, it's actually pretty up there. I would definitely say it's top two, top three in the context of modern hearing aids. So good job. Not everything can be sunshine and rainbows with hearing aids and reviews and my opinion. There are three very, very small negatives about these hearing aids. Uh, number one, we already talked about um, this travel charging case is it's not huge. I think it's built really well and it functions really well, and the battery life is fantastic. It's just like, whew, it's a big case. Second, um, on the actual device, right, each device only has one button, and it's instead of like a rocker switch. Um, so you can only assign like one particular function to that button. So your options for volume adjustment or program changing or answering calls right, is, is limited because there is only that one button on each receiver. Uh, furthermore, the whatever that button is programmed to do has to be programmed from your hearing specialist through their end of the program, right? You can't just go into the app and change and assign whatever you want to that button. It has to be done by the hearing specialist. Last, all right, this is the final thing, and I don't even know if it's gonna be a pervasive thing, right? I don't know if it's gonna affect you, but, in my experience, with the Bluetooth connectivity in terms of my watch, my phone, and my car, right? Adding my phone to the Bluetooth to the car while I'm using the hearing aids, while the watch app is going, whatever. It was chaos. Everything connected, everything connected fine. The setup was not an issue. But what started happening was I would play music and then it would just start speeding up, right? And it would get really high pitched and then it would cut out 
and then it would stop and then it would start and then it would get really fast and it would get high pitched and it would, it was crazy. And I could not get it to stop until I removed the app from my watch and closed the app on my phone. And even then, I still had a little bit of issue with that speed up and high pitched music while I got my hearing aids in. So I don't know if it's a weird Bluetooth setup issue. Like maybe if I wiped everything Bluetooth and just started from scratch, like maybe that would have helped. But removing apps or closing apps instead of having them open, did relieve it a little bit. I don't know if this is gonna happen to you, but it did happen to me, and I figured I would just share that. Is it the end of the world? Absolutely not. Would it, would it stop me from purchasing these hearing aids? Absolutely not, because every other function, every other program, every other everything about this hearing aid is so fantastic that this little tiny issue, even these little three issues, right, S sort of big, charging case, whatever. One button on the thing, it doesn't matter, right? I can get around it. You have the app, you can do things. The, the Bluetooth connectivity, weird speeding up music issue, not a big deal. Everything else is so worth it. The battery life, unbelievable. The hearing and noise function, mind-blowing, life-changing, right? I, I could not see myself saying no to these hearing aids when everything is so good. Furthermore, they are essentially future-proofing or future-preparing these hearing aids with the AuraCast function. So in the future, when you go to the movies, when you go to a play, when you go to a concert, when you go to the bar, when you go to wherever, if they have this AuraCast feature enabled, you will be able to just open the app, connect your hearing aids, and you will get the audio coming from that venue into your hearing aids in a public setting. So with that being said, as if I hadn't said so many good things already, and I and you didn't already know that I'm gonna tell you this, um, these are fantastic hearing aids. These are life-changing hearing aids. The technology and the construction of these hearing aids is next level, unbelievable. I have not been impressed to this level with hearing aids until these Nexia 9s. So wholeheartedly, without reservation, if you are looking for hearing aids, check out the Nexia line. They do come in multiple technology levels, right? There is the five, there is the seven, there is the nine. The nine is the highest level of technology, the five is the lower level of technology. There are going to be similarities in the different tiers. However, the nines are gonna have the most technology, whereas the fives are gonna have the least technology in that line. Zip hearing has multiple options for you, right? Even with the tiers, the technology tiers. So maybe just look at a different tier. I can pretty much assure you, you're, you're gonna be happy. So with that being said, I would like to thank you for watching this video. I would like to thank you for listening to the words coming out of my mouth. And I would like to thank Zip Hearing for providing these hearing aids for me to try out. I truly enjoy giving these hearing aids a test and trying them out and giving you my opinions and my experience as a real user, right? I'm not the guy trying to sell you the hearing aids. I don't make any money if you buy these. If you buy these, I don't make any money. So I have nothing to gain other than your positive experience and your healthy contribution to hearing better for yourself, right? We all need to just hear better. So if you have any questions, check out Zip Hearing, leave a comment, thumbs up this video, right? Give it a like, give us a comment, share something funny, share something cool. If you have these hearing aids and you wanna add something beneficial, type it down below. Again, thank you so much and uh, I'll check you guys out on the next video. See ya.